we just quickly review the idea of the sine and the cosine uh, if you have an x and a y axis and a circle of radius 1 and a vector from the origin out to the circle if the vector makes angle theta as measured counterclockwise from the positive x axis then the x coordinate of that vector which you can get by simply projecting the point at the tip of that vector down to the x axis is the cosine of theta and the y coordinate project, uh, obtained by projecting the point over to the y axis is y equals sine of theta now that's only if the radius is one if the radius is greater uh, if the radius was two then this would be two times the cosine of theta two times the sine of theta and theta is measured in radians uh, starting from the positive x-axis theta is zero at this point as we move counterclockwise uh, theta goes up to pi over two then pi three pi over two two pi if we were to continue around the circle we could then go to uh, three pi four pi five pi six pi etc around the circle now we're going to uh, illustrate the idea of parametric equations uh, parametric equations for curve in the xy plane uh, we're going to just let x of t be the function cosine of pi t now this is a function you should be familiar with and y of t equal t squared another type of function that you're certainly uh, familiar with probably more so than the trigonometric functions t is going to be our parameter so uh, as the value of t changes the values of x and y are going to change in this case they're going to change continuously and that's going to result in a curve in the xy plane in order to get a handle on how that works uh, let's just let t take the values 0 1 half 1 3 halves and 2 now, I've chosen these values uh, because they result in uh, easily calculated values or easily observed values of the cosine of pi t uh, if x equals 0 then the cosine of pi t is the cosine of pi times 0 and the cosine of 0 is the x coordinate uh, at this point and that's just 1 uh, if you go to 1 half then you have the cosine of pi times 1 half well pi times 1 half is pi over 2 and the cosine of pi over 2 if we take this point and project it down to the x-axis we see that the cosine is 0 so that x of t will be 0 reasoning similarly if t equals 1 we have the cosine of pi times 1 which is the cosine of pi that puts us at this point on the uh, circle and x is equal to negative 1 uh, at t equal 3 pi we have 3 pi over 2 that puts us at this point the cosine is again 0 and then if t equals 2 uh, cosine of pi t will be the cosine of 2 pi puts us back at this point and the cosine is equal to 1 so we see that our values of x of t go from 1 to 0 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 and we can simply once we see how these values of t work uh, we can simply see that as we move around the circle our x coordinate goes from 1 to 0 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 so this is how our x function changes in time the y function is of course a lot simpler we don't need a picture we can just square the numbers 0 1 half 1 3 halves and 2 obtaining 1 fourth or 0.25 1 9 fourths which is 2.25 and 4 now uh, in the next video we're going to use the uh, i and j vectors and the i and j vectors are easily understood the i vector is just a vector of length one it's called it's a unit vector so it has a length of one and it's in the x direction the j vector has a length of one and it's in the y direction so these are unit vectors meaning they have length 1 and the i vector is again simply understood to be the unit vector in the x direction the j vector will be the unit vector in the y direction and you'll see soon why these are important